Hello and welcome to a tutorial in AutoCAD. In this tutorial I'll show you how to create a dynamic cavity wall block. You can see on screen there I've got a bunch of um, just a rectangle that I've offset several times to represent a cavity wall that is 315 thick. If I hover over that you can see just a bunch of polylines that have been offset and they're all on the external walls layer. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a static block. So to do that I'll just select the walls, not the dimensions, I'll just highlight those. We'll type B for block and we'll press enter. Okay, and this will take us into our block definition dialog box. I'll just move that off to the right so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And we'll give this block a name and we'll just call it uh, dynamic wall block. We'll give it a base point, so where it says base point, we'll click this little icon with the green box and the white arrow, where it says pick point, we'll click on that. Uh, we'll give it a sensible base point, bottom left corner will do, we'll click on that. Dialog box will open up again. We'll just check the central column, it says convert to block. Five objects have been selected, uh, we'll click allow exploding, it's ticked, yeah that's fine, so we'll click OK to that. Uh, you can see now when I hover over this, it's now a block reference. So that's just a static block at the moment. So we want to make this turn it into now a dynamic block. So we want to build in some parameters and apply some actions to the parameters just to give it a little bit more intelligence. So we'll double click on the wall block and you can see it previews there for us. I'll just click OK to that and this will take us into our block editing or block authoring environment and this dialog box will come up here okay and that's the block authoring palettes tools okay so we're going to click on the parameters tab and we're going to put in a linear parameter so we'll click on linear and I'm just going to go down to the inside face of the bottom corner up to the inside face of the top internal corner okay and then we'll just place the label distance one that's the actual parameter so that's distance one okay I'll just place that now I can see there's a little yellow box here with a little exclamation mark inside it and if I hover over that it tells me that no actions are associated with the parameter so the first the next thing I have to do is I need to go back over to this palette and we'll select the actions tab second one from the top and we want to put in a stretch action we want to attach a stretch action to that distance one parameter so I'm just going to select stretch and I'll just follow the, prompt, the prompts that come up on screen the first prompt says select parameter so I'll click on the distance one parameter I'll just left click on it it'll now ask me to specify the point to associate with the action okay so I'm just going to go down to this little arrow. Uh, maybe I'll go up to the one on the top. Yeah, I'll just go up to the one on the top. I'll zoom right in. I want to get an endpoint snap dead center. I'll just click on that. Okay. Now the prompt on screen changes. It asks me to specify the first corner of the stretch frame. Okay. So I'm just going to click here somewhere. I'll just drag across click again and there's my stretch frame. The next prompt will ask me to select the objects so inside the stretch frame I'm just going to click again drag across and release. Okay now it still says select objects but I've already done that so I just press enter okay and now you can see that that stretch action has suddenly appeared on screen okay so that stretch action has been associated to the parameter <coughs> okay now I could do the same thing 
with the other little arrow on the bottom but in this case one stretch action should suffice okay so at this point I'm just going to test to make sure that that is, that is working so I'm going to go up onto the ribbon the very last tab I'm going to click close block editor and I'm going to click save changes to dynamic wall block I'll just click on that now when I click on the wall you can see I've got this base point down here that was the base point that I give it when I use the pick point tool I've also got this little arrow up here which will allow me hopefully when I click on it I can stretch the walls to wherever I want okay I'm just going to click on those dimensions for a minute I'll just oops excuse me I'll just click on do for a second I'll just delete the two dimensions take those out okay now when I click on the wall you can see I've got this extra little control in here so if I left click on that so it turns it into a hot spot I can actually type in what length I want the cavity walls to be now so I could type in I'll type in 8000 press enter and you can see the walls I respond accordingly I'll just try that again I'll just change it back to 5000 where it was originally I'll press enter and it seems to be working okay yeah okay so that's sort of the, the length parameter sorted out now I could I'm going to apply uh, the same technique again for the uh, width parameter okay okay so I've just repeated those steps and you can see I've got this little extra arrow grip down here now as well so if I click on that one I can type in the width distance press enter and I can see that that one's responding as well so I've got complete length and width control over the cavity walls okay and the reason that I didn't take the stretch frame over the the whole of the block was simply because you need to have something to stretch from and stretch to so you don't take your um, stretch frame over the entire block okay you always leave one wall um, fixed so that you, uh, as a reference so that you've got something to stretch from and stretch to okay so that seems to be working okay for us I'll just click on this one again okay I'll just type in 5000 press enter I'll just check this one yeah that one's still 5000 so we started off with a bunch of lines we blocked them so that we ended up with just a static block and then we applied some parameters we applied actions to the parameters so we end up with a dynamic block okay I hope that proves a benefit to you it saves you some drafting time in AutoCAD 2018 okay so that's it guys um, I'll get back to you soon with some other little tips and tricks in AutoCAD to um, update your drafting skills until then take care bye bye for now